Hello everyone, my name is Riley Decker and I'm the 2024 summer intern for the Nassau County 4-H program. Throughout the duration of my internship, I am tasked with creating and uploading videos regarding professional development in youth and the skills that they should learn and foster. Decision making seemed like the perfect topic for my first video as I could not decide which topic should be first. The first step is to identify the decision. Understanding that there is a decision that needs to be made is an important part of the process. You must try to clearly define the nature of this decision, whether it's a high or low time need or a high or low priority. An example of a high priority, high time need decision is planning, writing, and proofreading an essay. The second step is to gather relevant information. To do this, you need to understand what information you need, what sources to pull from, and how to get it. There are two types of information, internal and external. Internal information is found through self-assessment. Some questions you can ask yourself to find this information are, what are my strengths, how can I play to them when making this decision, and how can I improve on my weaknesses through this decision? External information, on the other hand, is found from outside of oneself, through peers, books, the internet, and other avenues. Step three is to identify the possible alternatives. As you begin to collect your internal and external information, you'll identify possible outcomes. This step is to help you list all possible outcomes, whether they are desired or not. Listing out all the negative and positive alternatives is necessary so we can learn how to avoid undesired paths. Step four is to weigh the evidence. You need to draw on the information you've gathered and your emotions when appropriate, and either imagine or plan out each alternative to the end. It's helpful during this step to think about the possible consequences of each alternative. While planning out each alternative to the end, you'll need to identify if the need from step one has been met or resolved with this alternative. By going through this process for each course of action, you will begin to favor certain outcomes and list alternatives in priority order. Okay. Step five is to choose among alternatives. After weighing all the evidence, you should be able to choose the path that is best fit for you and your situation. You could even combine chosen paths if it's feasible and attainable. Step six is to take action. Just like the name, it involves taking action by implementing the path you've chosen for in Step 5. Step 7 involves reviewing your decision and its consequences. In this final step, you will review the results of your decision and evaluate whether the need from Step 1 was resolved or not. If the decision did not meet the need, you may need to repeat certain steps of the process. Thank you for joining me today to learn about the process of decision making. I hope to see you all next Monday.